The Sight by Aaron Hunter, Chapter 5 Lion Kit woke in his nest. A giraffe ruffled his golden, golden pill. Where's Jake it? Jake it usually slept beside him, but there is an empty space there now. Then he remembered. Lion Kit felt sickness surge in his belly as he pictured Jake it lying limp at the side of the clearing. He's going to be okay, he reminded himself, but the clearing... But in the clearing, watching Leafpool and Brambleclaw crouch by his body, Lion Kit had thought about his brother, who was dead. A shiver ran down his tail. He nudged Holly Kit, who was still sleeping beside him, her black belt almost making her invisible in the darkness. It's cold without Jake Kit. She'll be, he'll be back soon, she murmured, not opening her eyes. But it's weird when he's not here. He's only on the other side of the clearing. He'll be back in a day or two, Holly Kit rolled over. Go back to sleep. Within moments, her breathing deepened and she was asleep again. Lion Kit felt a tug of sadness. Jake Kit should be with them, just like always. He closed his eyes, but the image of his brother lying in the clearing filled his mind again. It was my idea to leave the camp. Jake Kit could be dead, or the fox cubs could chase them into the hollow. What a mess. Lion Kit got to his paws. He needed fresh air to clear his head. He peered through the shadows to where Daisy slept. Her long, creamy fur blended into Ferncloud's dark gray pelt, and Ferncloud's whiskers were twitching as she dreamed her two kids snuggled against her flank. Neither queen would be pleased at being woken up just so he could ask permission to leave the den. Besides, he'd be back before they woke. With a flick of his tail, he picked his way past Hollykin and squeezed through the prickly entrance. Cold night stung his nose, and the frosty ground made his paws ache as he padded around the edge of the camp. Grayson's drifted from the forest. A bird chattered an alarm call far away. He glanced up at Silverbell, spread across the inky sky. He was glad Skyclan had let Jake stay down here with his clanmates. Perhaps he could look in on his brother, and Leafpool would be asleep by now. Lankit kept into the shadows, painfully aware that he was not supposed to be outside the nursery without permission. As he crept along the stretch of the thornbus that sealed the camp, his heart seemed to pound in his chest loud enough to wake his clanmates. When he scanned the clearing, Lion Kit realized with a start that he was not the only cat awake so late. A shape was stirring on the other side of the clearing. The leaf outline of a cat peeled away from the shadows, followed by another. Lion Kit ducked under a branch, relieved to find a small space inside the prickly barrier where he could hide. He peered through the twigs at the emerging shapes. Dustbot and Spiderleg were padding side by side at the pool of the moonlight that lit the center of the camp. They're nearly here, the long-limbed warrior Dustbelt told Dustbelt. Good, Dustbell meowed. Lionheart strained his ears, listening. Frozen leaves crackled beyond the camp wall. He felt the thorn barrier tremble as Stormfur and Brackenfur pushed their way through the entrance to the tunnel camp. The moon moon eye patrol returned. Dustbell hurried toward them. Anything to report? All quiet, Stormfur replied. Lionheart pressed himself further into the thorns. He could always say he slipped out only to make dirt, but he was not ready yet to be sent back to the nursery. Brackenfur held a mouse between his teeth. He dropped it. It's good to be out hunting again, the golden tabby purred. Did your did you patrol the new border at the edge of the clearing? Spiderleg asked. Brackenfur nodded. Shadowclan have marked it well, he mewed. But th- there's no sign they strayed into Thunderclan territory. Thus belt narrowed his eyes. They better not. It's bad enough Flyerstar gave them the piece of the land in the first place. If I catch any Shadowclan clan on the wrong side of the border, I'll rip his fur off. They wouldn't dare, Brackenfur growled. They dared before Firestar gave them the territory, Spiderleg pointed out. He glanced at the scar on Brackenfur's flank, a reminder of one of those vicious quarrels the two clans had fought over the stretch of open ground on either side of the stream running down from the two lake clearing. Shadow Clan had always laid claim to the territory, and Firestar had finally granted it to them at the last gathering to save further blood being spilled over a stretch of land that was too bare to offer good hand- hunting. It wasn't worth fighting over, Stormfur commented. Firestar was right to give it up, Dustbelt snorted. Thunderclan has never given up territory before. No, agreed Brackenfur. Spiderleg turned in an agitated circle, tail lashing, but Brackenfur went on. However, the land was too exposed, and the two leggeds will be there soon, once it's green light. And, hun- and Thunderclan are more used to hunting in the forest, Stormfur added. Firestar shouldn't have given it up so easily, Spiderleg insisted. Lion Kit watched nervously from his hiding place as Spiderleg gr- glared at Stormfur. The long-limbed black warrior was more hot-headed than his father, Dustpelt, but St- Stormfur was refused to be intimidated. We have to, we have, we gave up nothing but a piece of barren land that was too close to the two-legged territory. He hissed. You sound like Brambleclaw. Dustbelt curled his lip. He only agreed with Firestar's decision because any cat knows he'd rather face a pack of dogs than a two-legged. Lion Kit's fur bristled with anger. His father wasn't scared of anything. 
Brambleclaw sided with Ty Firestar because it was a wise decision, not because he was scared of two legs, Stormfire retorted. Was it was it wise to stand before all the clans and announce that ThunderClan can no longer defend its boundaries? Spider leg me out hotly. Shadow Clan have no right to set one mangy paw on ThunderClan land. Well it's Shadow Clan land now, Stormfire concluded. Spider Lake glared at him. Of course you don't care how much territory we gave up, he snarled. You're not a ThunderClan cat. Lion Cat flinched. Stormfire fought off the invading Shadow Clan warriors as fiercely as any cat. He watched closely, waiting to see how the Grey Warrior would react, but Stormfire only stared back at Spider Lake, his eyes wide with shock. Dragonfire stepped between them, his eyes glinting anxiously in the moonlight. It doesn't matter if we disagree, he meowed. The decision has been made. But Shadow Clan will think that they can take whatever they want from us, Spider Lake objected. Firestar has made it clear that, that, well, that he was doing Shadow Clan a favor when he let them take the land, Dragonfire reminded them. He left no cat in any doubt that he was acting out of wisdom rather than weakness. Then why did one star and Leopard Star look so interested? Dustball snapped. It was obvious they thought that Thunderclan couldn't defend their territory. What if one clan decided that they want a piece of the forest on the other side? Spider Lake chipped in. One star hasn't exactly been a friend of ours since he became leader. He's been okay since he helped out us with the badger attack, Brackenfair pointed out. But he's still going to be looking out for his clan, Dustbelt argued. If he thinks we're weak, he might see a chance to expand his territory. Can you imagine Firestar giving up Prey Ridge part of our territory? Stormfire asked. Dustbelt glared at him for a moment, then dipped his head. No, he concluded, conceded. And we don't have to worry about River Clan, Brackenfair pressed. We share no boundaries with them, and leopardstar has been pretty quiet since Hawkfrost died on our territory. Does any cat really know what happened to Doc Dar to Hawkfrost? Stormfire added. Only Firestar found his body while while he was on patrol with Bramaclaw and Ashfur. Spider like meowed. Lion Kit did not fully understand. He had heard Daisy and Fernclaw talking about Hawkfrost, the Frost, the River Clan deputy who had died on ThunderClan territory, and paled on a wooden spike from a fox trap. No one was sure what the River Clan warrior had been doing there. Lion Kit had tried to ask his father once about Hawkfrost. After all, Hawkfrost was Brimbleclaw's half -brother, brother, and therefore Lion Kit's kin. But Brimbleclaw had been reluctant to answer. The only information he would give was that Brimbleclaw and Scorflight had carried the dead Riverclan warrior back to the camp, as they would have done with any fallen warrior, and that he had been mourned by his clanmates. As Lion Kit strained to hear whether the warrior's conversation would reveal anything new, he felt the thorn barrier rustle around him. He realized with a jolt that he was right beside a small entrance that led to where the cats made their dirt, the same entrance that he, Jake, and Holly Kit had sneaked out of in search of the fox kids. Cubs. Alarm, alarmed, Lion Kit sniffed the air. Mousepaw was squeezing his way back through less than a tail length away. He shrank further back into the shadows, but he could not escape Mousepaw's sharp nose. Lion Kit? Mousepaw hissed into the darkness. Lion Kit wondered for a moment whether to bury himself deeper in the barrier, but he didn't like the look of thorns, and besides, his pride would not let him. I am in here, he confessed. As he spoke, Dustbelt's amber eyes flashed toward them. Mousepaw, he called. Lion Kit held his breath. Would the apprentice give him away? There had been, they had been demons for a while in the nursery, but Mousepaw might side with the warriors now. I'm just on my way back to the den, Mousepaw told Dustbelt. A moment later, he squeezed into Lion Kit's hiding place. Aren't you supposed to be in the nursery? he whispered. Lankit flicked his tail crossly. He was grateful that Mousepaw hadn't given him away, but he hated being treated like a feeble kid. I couldn't sleep, he grumbled. I'm used to having Jake in around. Were Dustpelt and Stormfur arguing? They were talking about Firestar's decision to give ShadowClan a bit of land by the river, Lankit explained. Dustpelt accused Stormfur of not being a real ThunderClan warrior. Mousepaw's flattened his ears and shocked. I'm surprised that Stormfur didn't shred him. But Stormfur's not a real ThunderClan warrior, is he? Lion Kit pointed out, puzzled. You better not say that to his face, Mousepaw warned. But he was born in RiverClan and lived with the tribe. Mousepaw! Dustpelt's voice sounded from the clearing. Mousepaw shoved Lion Kit further back into the bush. He stifled a squeak of pain as thorns duck into his belt, and Mousepaw squeezed out from the end of the bushes. Shouldn't you be back in the apprentice's den? Dustpelt queried. I thought I smelled mouse, Mousepaw lied. Training into the camp would be... Stupid, even for a mouse, Dustpelt muttered. Go to your den. I'm sure Spiderlug won't be pleased if you're too tired for training in the morning. Yes, Dustbelt. Mousepaw dipped his head and padded quickly away. Lion Kit waited, thorns poking him, and until Dustbelt and the other warriors headed to their den. It seemed foolish to risk going to the medicine cat's den now. As soon as he was sure that no cat stirred, Lion Kit dragged himself out from under the thorn barrier and crept back to the nursery. 
Several thorns from the barrier had caught in his fur and were tangled in his belt. They pricked him as he curled gingerly back into his nest. He closed his eyes and waited for sleep, but his conversation with the mouse paw echoed in his mind. It hadn't occurred to him before how important it was to the warriors whether a cat was truly ThunderClan or not. His own place in the clan had always been something that he had taken for granted. He supposed that ev not every cat was lucky enough to be born in the forest with a clan deputy and clan leader as Kim. But he still didn't understand why Mousepaw had taken the quarrel between the warriors so seriously. So long as Stormfire and Brooke were loyal to ThunderClan, what else mattered?